Hello everybody, Wolf back here, and welcome to my review of the latest IL-2 Great Battles module, Tank Crew Clash at Prokhorovka. Today, let's start off with talking about what IL-2 Tank Crew Clash at Prokhorovka is. Tank Crew is a brand new World War II tank simulation that is fully integrated into the IL-2 Great Battles series. For those of you who are unaware, IL-2 Great Battles is a flight simulation that is set during the Second World War. The first iteration of this latest generation of IL-2 was Battle of Stalingrad, released back in 2014. Since then, IL-2 Great Battles has seen many new modules. IL-2 is continually updated, and each module benefits from the most recent updates. Tank Crew is the latest module to be incorporated into the IL-2 Great Battles ecosystem. In this module, you are able to drive around, command, and fight and 10 historically accurate armored vehicles that participated in the battle near Prokhorovka during Operation Citadel. There are multiplayer and single player game modes available, allowing for many ways to play the simulation. Tank Crew is also VR compatible, Track IR compatible, and allows for HOTAS control. Like I said in the start of this review, Tank Crew is fully integrated with the rest of IL-2 Great Battles. Although I really enjoy IL-2 already as a flight simulation, I want to judge Tank Crew on its merits as a tank simulation first and foremost. We will discuss how the sim benefits from being part of the Great Battle series and how it is actually held back in a few areas. Hit. Hit, first shot, nice. Reload, reload, reload. I missed the second shot. I did too. He's... He's turning towards me. Got him. I He's hit done. Him. Okay. Of course, the most exciting part of any armored combat simulation is the vehicles themselves. Tank Crew comes with 10 highly detailed armored vehicles with fully modeled interiors, exteriors, and crew members. The allied tanks included with the module are as follows. T-3476 KV-1S M4A2 Sherman, SU-122, SU-152. Of course, the Germans get five tanks as well, and they are the Panzer III, Panzer IV, Panzer V Panther, Panzer VI Tiger, and the Ferdinand. All tanks included have detailed interiors and exteriors. The exterior models are truly fantastic in my opinion and the amount of detail on the tank track and suspension systems alone is quite impressive. I think one vehicle that shows this off really well is the T-34 with its Christie suspension system. The detail does not stop there. Different bits of equipment are strapped onto the tank such as extra track, wire cutters, jacks, and other tidbits that really make the tanks feel used. There are other cosmetic options available for the tanks as well such as fitting more steel wheels on the T-34 due to the high demand of rubber, or reversing the gun mantlet shield on the Ferdinand. Historically, this was done in the field by crews to allow for easier access to the bolts, holding the shield together. Of course, the side skirts are available for tanks that historically use them, and on some tanks you can even remove them, such as the Panther. Overall, the 3D models are truly stunning and are very well done. There are a handful of skins available for the tanks, However, I really would like to see more official skins added in the future. The level of detail transfers to the interior of the tanks as well. Every position of the tank is fully modeled, all the gauges work, and there are animations for all the positions. For example, you can see the hand cranks turn as you traverse the turret, shells are shown loaded into the breach, and you can see them being ejected as well. Of course, you can see the cannon recoil when fired. Although the crew members don't have specialized animations for loading the shells, it is still cool to see all the mechanisms at work. In addition to this, the crew members are modeled rather well. As you fight inside your tank, your crewmen will get sweaty, and suit and grime will build up on their uniforms and their faces, giving you a sense of just how miserable it must have been to be in one of these machines. The map included with IL-2 tank crew is 10,000 square kilometers that focused on, you guessed it, Prokhorovka sector. There is a portion of the map that includes destructible buildings, which is ideal for tank combat. 
Crushing houses and trees is remarkably fun. I must admit, I spent quite a lot of time doing this when it was added. The Prokhorovka map is rather good, and it gets the job done. It's by far the best map for armored combat, as it should be. It was specifically designed for this job. With that being said, the option is still there for you to drive your tanks on any other IL-2 Great Battles map. This is great and allows for some really good combined armed scenarios in multiplayer, and even in single player missions that take place outside of the Battle of Kursk. Buildings on these maps such as Stalingrad and Kamban do not have destructible buildings however. I still think it is great that the option is there to drive these tanks on the other maps. There is one thing I think I should mention here however. The older maps were not designed with tank combat in mind. Invisible trees and walls do crop up from time to time, especially when driving through forests. These can be extremely frustrating at times, and can even damage your tank if you hit them too hard. These walls seem to be the most common on the Veliki Luki map. I have been playing a lot on Moscow, Stalingrad, and Kuban recently, and these walls have not been much of an issue. These maps are serviceable for tank crew, and some things are a bit low fidelity like some of the houses and trees. The Prokhorovka map is by far the best when it comes to ground detail. The maps are not perfect, but they get the job done. These maps have to be optimized for ground combat and for air combat, and I'm sure it is no easy task to pull that off. I do think some additional graphical options, including increasing the render distance of grass, would be welcome additions for dedicated tankers. Tank crew's combat is entirely first person. You, the player, are limited to what you realistically would be able to see around you. Tanks, especially during the Second World War, were notorious for having remarkably poor visibility. Tank crew nails that feeling of being trapped in a small metal box with only a few ways of looking outside without exposing yourself to a stray bullet. Of course, you can risk yourself and stick your head outside the hatch for the added benefit of situational awareness. I find myself doing this often. When the rounds start flying, tank crew combat is extremely tense. There are no health bars or hit point systems here. Ballistics are properly modeled and so is armor penetration. There are different ammunition types in the sim from your standard high explosive and armor piercing high explosive to other ammo types like APCR and heat, all having different characteristics. Due to the high performance of these guns, the tanks are rather vulnerable. One hit at close range or one well-placed hit will render your tank combat ineffective or worse. All of this combined makes combat very dangerous. This is what I would expect from a realistic tank simulation. Good gunnery and good positioning are rewarded. There are many ways to control your tank in combat as well. One way is to flip from station to station, managing both the gunner and the commander at once. This is an easy task in tanks such as the T-34-76 UTZ, as the commander is also the gunner. Of course, this has obvious downsides. Regardless, in all the tanks, you can spot targets as the commander and flip to the gunner station and start putting warheads on foreheads. You can also control the tank entirely from the commander's position, issuing orders through the commander menu. This menu mainly uses the F keys like F1, F2, and F3 on your keyboard. If I'm being honest, this is a rather cumbersome system. I think a wheel similar to what we have for Jester and DCS or other games would really help make this system easier to use and less cumbersome, especially when in combat. Despite the shortcomings of this system, once you get used to it, you can issue orders relatively quickly. The command menu also allows you to order your platoon and missions where you are the leader, ordering them to suppress targets, change formation, fire on the move, and many, many other commands. Every tank comes with a rather sophisticated damage model as well. There are many systems on the tank such as the engine, transmission, and track that can be damaged and put out of service. There are different levels of system damage that can be sustained, from light, easily repairable damage to outright destroyed and beyond repair. There is the ability to make repairs on most of these systems, however. Depending on how bad the damage is will influence just how long repairs take. Of course, some repairs take longer than others. For example, most track repairs take around 10 minutes. In addition to this, the health of your crew is something that needs to be considered as well. There are chances of them being wounded or even killed. There are various levels of wounds and each one affects the visibility of the crew member. When a crewman is severely wounded and is really difficult to see anything at all, 
and uh, can make spotting targets extremely hard. It is even possible to poison your crew due to gas buildup inside the tank. If a crew member is killed inside your tank, it's generally rendered combat ineffective. The only time when this is not true is when just the loader is killed. You can still reload the main gun, but at a much, much slower pace. There is no way to replace your crew like in an arcade game. Either way, chances are if your buddy next to you gets splattered, you're getting out of the tank ASAP. I do welcome this added realism. Once again, this adds to the suspense when in combat. A lot can go wrong very, very quickly in an armored vehicle. I have a pretty good shot at the Sherman, but I will wait till you're in position. All right, I am... Uh... Oh, I had just exploded. Okay. Tank crew clash at Prokhorovka ships with two scripted campaigns that are 10 missions long. Breaking Point follows Soviet tankers during the fighting around Prokhorovka, and Last Chance, which follows German tankers during the battle as well. These campaigns are well constructed and prove to be quite interesting. I actually did play them on the channel. There were lots of awesome set pieces which really give you a sense of what these men went through, as best as a computer simulation can do anyway. There are a handful of single missions available as well. There is one mission for each tank plus a few others thrown in. I have not played through all of these, but they seemed pretty serviceable. There are a total of 18 single missions. There is also a quick mission generator, which allows you to pit yourself against other tanks in various scenarios. I would love to see more scripted campaigns for tank crew in the future, whether free or even paid. It would be nice to see campaigns that center around some of the tanks that are not part of the base campaigns, like the SU-152 or the Panther. I see a lot of people asking for a dynamic career mode like we have in other Great Battles modules. I must admit, I do not see how this would work properly for tank crew or ground combat as a whole. I think a more authentic armor combat experience is delivered through the scripted campaigns. I know that may not seem like a whole lot of single player content, however it would be wrong of me not to mention the work of the community here. There are loads of missions available for download on the forum. There are also community made campaigns such as Volo Collapse Highway by Elliot 543 which is set during the Battle of Moscow. There is also an easy mission generator, which is a third party program for tank crew as well, made by SYN Vander. This is a really well developed program and allows for some quick customizable missions. You can also make co-op missions with this program, so I have been using it quite a bit. There's a lot more community content on the forums, and I expect to see more community content as the product matures. Multiplayer has proven to be my favorite thing to do in IL-2 tank crew. It is everything I look for in a multiplayer game. It rewards good tactics, planning, and patience above all else, and will punish you if you're really careless. Due to how punishing the sim can be, it is good to engage your targets when you know you have a clear advantage. Know when to retreat, reposition, and work out a new plan. The tension you can feel as you maneuver into position or moving down a street in a town is very high knowing any move could be your last. The lack of situational awareness really comes into play here. It is difficult to pinpoint where you are being shot at when you're buttoned up inside the tank. Unlike other third-person tank games, where it's very easy to keep up situational awareness and spot your enemy. Because Tank Crew is fully integrated with other Great Battles modules, you are able to work together with other players and aircraft. This makes for an extraordinary combined arms experience. Tank Crew Multiplayer has proven to be a very tactical and stimulating experience. Working with others to set up the perfect ambush or running like hell to the nearest tree line to get away from an IL-2 lobbing rockets your way. I have been having a blast. There is also the ability to co-op a tank with other players. Each station inside the tank can be occupied by another player, allowing you and your buddies to work together. This was the original design goal for Tank Crew and it does it very well. Managing other players as a commander and trying to issue orders with little to no situational awareness has provided some very interesting and tense situations. There are a few servers out there that offer a great combined arms experience. Be warned though that the player count is not extremely high for tank crew yet, although it has been climbing quite a bit recently. <laughs> Generally, when I hop on, I am able to find other players and have a good time. There is one server I've been playing on quite a bit, and that is Finnish Virtual Pilots. 
I have a few videos of gameplay on this server, so I would recommend checking those out if you wanted to see what multiplayer tank crew is like. Hit. There's also another Target server called Advanced Insecure. In the There's lots of action to be had on the server, the and it mixes AI fire. units with other players, which is very cool to see. In addition to these drop-in and drop-out multiplayer servers, there are some groups that do weekly events. Simulated Combat Group does a mission every Sunday. I attended one of these and it was very neat to see. Lots of tankers working together to achieve an objective, very similar to something you would see in an Arma 3 op, for example. There is also Tank and Spank, an event I have yet to attend, but would like to join soon. More information for these events can be found on the forum if you are interested. Where? I see the vehicle. Oh, oh, there it is. Possible Sherman. All them out. Yep. Yeah, he's shooting at me. Sherman, bearing one, two, seven. You can see the smoke from his gun barrel firing. Hit. Oh, there he is. He is 900 meters away from me. He's Hit. backing again. Another hit. He's moving he's forward. Smoking. He hit him again. Sally, I see him. I hit him. I think someone else just hit him. Oh. Down. I think something that can not be overstated here is just how awesome the combined arms experience is with IL-2 Great Battles. This is the main benefit of tank crew being in IL-2. You have aircraft flying above, dogfights swirling around overhead while you are engaging other targets on the ground. It's really great when you get some pilots working together with you on the ground and they are spotting targets for you and leading you to them. It really does work extremely well and just how awesome it is can really not be overstated. It certainly is a major selling point for this sim. Okay, I'm aiming at him. I am too. On the way. Missed to the left, reducing range slightly. I Good just hit. got him. Oh, I'm at one kilometer. Yeah. Firing. Hit. He exploded. <laughs> yeah, we should. Okay, I have visual. Just transitioning. Come here, Mr. Sherman. He is hauling at. Oh, he's stopping. Stuka fired. I hit him. He exploded. <laughs> oh, beautiful. I know what some of you are thinking. This review is way too positive. Wolfpack must have been paid to do this. Well, rest assured, I have paid full price for this product, and I was not paid to do this review. I just really enjoy the game, and I do want it to be successful. However, I am capable of seeing flaws with this product, and I want to point them out so you, the consumer, can make an informed decision. My major gripes have already been pointed out, like the invisible walls. For starters, binding controls and tank crew as a new player is kind of a mess. Some of the keybinds you need are in the tank crew specific category, and some other necessary tank crew controls are elsewhere. It makes finding what you need as a new player a real pain. There is a station notes tab, which helps a bit with this, but I think implementation of tank crew key bindings could be a little bit better. Here is a downside that I'm going to go ahead and say, although it has been confirmed to be in development, that is infantry. As it stands of uploading this video, there is no infantry included in IL-2 tank crew. Alive. This has been stated to be in the works multiple times by the lead producer, so I expect we will see something relatively soon. I think this will add a lot to gameplay, and really sell the ground combat experience. I will update the pen post below whenever infantry is added to the sim. Although this is entirely subjective, I'm going to include the price here, as this is the most common complaint I see about IL-2 tank crew. As it stands, tank crew costs $79.99 US, which may seem like a lot and be very off-putting. I understand. This module is still very new and has yet to go on sale. I expect it will go on sale rather soon, and Great Battles modules have generous sales most of the time. I will say that I have gotten my money's worth out of Tank Crew and think the devs are justified in charging this price because it really is a highly detailed product and they put a lot of work into it. But I understand this may be an unpopular opinion. Tank Crew, half off for example, is an absolute steal in my opinion. 
I'm so if right. the price is the main thing putting you off from tank crew, oh, just oh, put it on your wish list and wait for a sale. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's really it for negatives though. All my major negatives were listed previously in the review. It is worth mentioning here though, that every module in the IL-2 Great Battle series constantly receives updates and improvements from the developers. Tank crew is no different. Just a few weeks ago, new muzzle blast animations and new terrain graphics were implemented in the tank crew. These modules are always being improved, and tank crew is no different. I would not be surprised if a lot of the issues brought up here in this review were resolved in the near future. Hell, one major downside of tank crew, the lack of infantry, is already being addressed. Just something to keep in mind, as tank crew is not going to be abandoned anytime soon. If you cannot tell by now, my view of IL-2 tank crew clash at Prokhorovka is extremely positive. It is a highly detailed and realistic tank simulation that takes pride in being a sim, all while being relatively accessible as well. In my opinion, it is one of, if not the best, World War II tank simulations on the market today. I think once infantry is added, it'll easily earn that number one slot. Tank Crew is something I have been searching for for years. A good, recently developed World War II tank simulation. IL-2 Great Battles is already a fantastic product on its own. I am sure a lot of IL-2 players saw Tank Crew and thought, great, now I have tanks in my flight sim. However, I think Tank Crew is a bit more than that. I think Tank Crew is a proper tank simulation that happens to be part of a flight sim. I am looking forward to what the devs do in the future to improve IL-2 Tank Crew and look forward to the possibility of Tank Crew 2. If any of you wanted a second opinion on IL-2 Tank Crew, be sure to head over to Stormbirds and look at Shamrock 15's review there. Well, that will do it for this video. I know it is something rather different for the channel, doing reviews and whatnot, but like I said, I really did want to get the word out there about IL-2 Tank Crew because I truly think it is a fantastic product. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this in the future. But anyway, that is all I really have for today. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. But until next time, this is Wolfpack345 signing off and I will see you all on the next one.